everyone welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for tuning in I hope you're all well so in today's video I have for you um, the ordinary colors foundation so this is the serum and the coverage foundation in the shades 3.1 Y which is dark with yellow undertones so I think about a couple of months ago or three I did a review on the shades 3.2 N which is deep neutral and by the end of the video I did ask you know what you guys thought of it and I think most of you guys said it was too dark and I realized that as well that it was too dark so once they restocked I quickly ordered these two and um, which is like one shade lighter than these I think it um, is worth mentioning that it comes in 21 shades which I think is fantastic and um, so you're bound to find a shade that's sort of um, matches your skin tone I think retail for I think around £5.90 to £6 depending on where you buy them and it comes in a 30ml um, content and they both have SPF 15 which I think is fantastic. I know they used to be a pain to get hold of them but I think now they've sort of branched out a bit more uh, apart from them selling them on their website I uh, just see them. ASOS stocks them as well. I checked this morning before filming this video and I had and I had everything in stock, all the colours, all the shades and all the undertones. Also Cult Beauty, I've come to realise this, sell them as well. And I think um, either House of Frasier or John Lewis on Oxford Street, I think they have like a pop-up store. And also if you live in London, maybe it might be worth going to their um, store at Spitalfields Market. And also I think, oh, Victoria Health also stocks them online. So you do have a few outlets to get a hold of these. And this time around, when I ordered these, um, the 3.1, they arrived literally within five days, even though it did say online that there was still pretty much um, transactions, all of orders to go through. But it's, it, it, I got my order within five days. So I think, um, so I think now you might have a better chance of, you know, getting um, getting some. So the serum one, which is like very light and very runny, this is like a this offers a light to medium coverage. It feels like skin, looks like skin, gives you like a nice glow within. Whereas the high coverage lives up to its name. It is like a almost like your average or your full um, coverage foundation, but it's still very comfortable on the skin and it's very buildable. It's good for the price range. And also, um, the packaging comes with like a pump, um, which has like a, a lock-in feature where you twist the one in and it, it locks, so it's great for travelling. Or you can order the, I think I now have a dropper, so I ordered one of the droppers, which I think is about 80 pence. So if you're not into pumps, um, you have the option to buy, to purchase a separate dropper. But I, I like the pump because... Um, just because of the ease of traveling with them. I'm gonna go ahead and start reviewing these for you. So the plan is I'm going to start off with the serum foundation, tell you what I think about it and then I'll take it off and then I'll apply the coverage foundation and then yeah, I'll tell you what I um, think of it. So that's the plan so let's get started. So with the darker one from the previous video I used to wear this without a primer because the primer I was using at that time was quite thick so now that I have a light primer which is the Fenty one I'm going to see how this works with this serum foundation so I'm going to do half my face with the primer and half my face without the primer and we'll see how that goes so I'm going to give this a good shake I'm going to go with two pumps and it's very runny just um, apply this all over my face in stipple motion and then I'm going to blend or buff into the skin. And so this is a lightweight serum formula and it offers light to medium coverage and it's supposed to look and feel like skin so blending with your natural skin tone and also your natural glow. So the side with the primer is a little bit um, dragging when I'm trying to blend it in. It feels a bit feels like I'm dragging my skin more with this one just blended into it straight away. Yeah, this side is so easy and so quick it's just basically without any without pulling or dragging the skin whereas this one I feel like I really need to go in and buff it into the skin. Do you need a primer? Absolutely not. Skip the primer and go straight in with the with the serum foundation. Uh, I feel like you can even use your fingers to blend um, if you prefer you may not need any tools for that. 
so that is good to know so I look a bit pale on the camera I'm gonna have to change the setting so bear with me whilst I do that because it's giving me this white off cast look and I'm not feeling it so I'm just gonna reset the camera yeah so going back on the foundation as I said definitely don't need a primer I feel like I'm, I need a bit more um, product on this side of my face Again, I'm going to start off by stiffening the product onto so I like that it's buildable and you can go back and add more product to where you feel you need more coverage Um, it hasn't covered my dark spots yet but then again I do struggle with this side of my face so yes this is the serum and how it looks on my skin it feels so comfortable on the skin it doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything this side yes again probably due to the primer um, so it feels like I'm wearing something, whereas here it doesn't feel like I'm wearing anything. It looks natural, it doesn't look like I'm wearing foundation or it doesn't look like I've got colour. probably need to give it some time to sort of almost like melt and blend into my skin. But I don't think the colour is bad at all. It's not perfect. I'm going to go ahead and powder my face just to remove some of the shine, diffuse the shine and see how this works. So the powder I use every day is my MAC Mineralize Skin Finish in dark i'm just going to go in with a fluffy brush and diffuse some of the shine i feel like i know i keep going about the primer side but this is important I'm, I'm actually glad i did half and half i feel like when i go in here with the powder i need to sort of pat it into the skin whereas when i go on this side because it feels so light i feel like i can actually just brush it all over my face whereas if i do this i feel like i'm moving the product around and I feel like I'm dragging my skin at the same time so pat it, I need to pat the same whereas here I can just quickly just brush it all over just to diffuse any shine so here's how this foundation uh, this serum foundation looks I'm going to take a few snapshots and I'm gonna go and take this off and we come back and try on the coverage one and then we'll do like a side by side comparison so Okay, so I am back with a fresh, freshly moisturised um, face and I'm going to go back in with the primer. Again, I feel intrigued to do half and half. I feel like I want to see how it will perform on my skin with half of it with primer and half of it with that. So I'm going to do it on this side. Right, so, so now going in with the coverage foundation, again I'm going to give it um, a good shake. And as you can see, this one is slightly thicker and is not running at the back of my hand as the serum one it was. I'm going to stipple on my face and then blend in. So again this is the prime side and this is bare face. So you guys. So straight away I can tell that I definitely need more than two pumps for this. So I'm gonna go back in with another pump and then so what I'm noticing on both sides the brush is not the best tool to use. I can see a few streaks um, already on my face blending them in but I feel like at the same time it's dragging the product as well I'm pretty sure you're going to tell on camera so I'm gonna go and dump in a beauty blender I'm back with a, a dumping beauty sponge and I'm gonna pick up a bit of the product so I can blend and um, blend into the skin properly and remove all the streaks I like that this is not a very fast drying formula, so um, you can still go, I can still go back in and correct. There isn't that much of a difference between the primer and the non-primed um, part of my face. It both covers well. It sits very comfortable. Both sides feels very comfortable on the skin. I'm gonna go in with just a little bit. See if we can cover the dark spots here, because this is a coverage foundation, so I want to see how well it performs. Um, and I'm just going to apply, see if it's buildable and how it feels on the skin. So you definitely need a sponge with this one. Not only does it help with the blending and how the, uh, the product will sit on your skin, but it's just and also it is buildable and it has cover pretty much the dark spots here. And like I said, it lifts this sheen finish behind. Um, it's not too greasy. I'm pretty sure a powder will be able to remove um, diffuse the shine but it feels very comfortable it feels very lightweight 
um, on the skin as well. So, and again, the shade. Now, I think that I've gone in with the second coat. The shade looks more true to color um, or true to the skin than before. Yeah, so th on this side here, the primer has helped smoothen out my skin very, very well and help with the product sticking or blending into my skin, whereas here, not so much. Um, so, with the coverage, I will recommend a primer. Something that's lightweight as well. I'm going to go back in with the powder. Same brush, same powder, and I'm just going to pat this all over my face. I'm going to go off camera, finish off my makeup, and I'll come back and I'll tell you, I'll give you the final verdict on these two products. Okay guys, so I'm back with a completed makeup look. And the final verdict, I would say, on the... Um, on the coverage foundation one thing I noticed is that um, you would need a mattifying primer I have oily skin so already even though I have sort of powdered my face down I already see some oil coming through especially on the side where I did not prime my face whereas this side here I can still see a bit of oil but then again the Fenty primer is not a what do you call it a mattifying primer in terms of coverage it lives up to its name it does give you full coverage you might have to go in with like two pumps like I did or a bit more completely buildable and it still feels very lightweight on the skin and it looks and feels good it feels comfortable um, so yeah I don't have anything bad to say about this or both of them at all so Hi guys, I thought I would do a quick check in with you guys regarding the Ordinary Colours High Coverage Foundation. Excuse my robe, I'm at home just editing the video, so I thought um, it's been about five hours since I wore the foundation. I think probably just a little bit over five hours. It's six o'clock now, um, so I thought I'll check in with you. And from what I can see, my face is looking quite shiny. This is normal for me. With any foundation, I expect to get oily around the four hour mark. However, everything is still intact. My blush, you can still see there. My concealer is still there. It has creased a little bit under my eyes. Um, another thing I will mention is that the side without the primer, which is this side here, I look more shinier and my pores are more enlarged whereas over here on the side with the primer it looks very smooth and very refined and i am less oilier so i would definitely recommend you use an oil um oil you use a primer if you're going to wear the coverage foundation a mattifying primer will probably be best but yeah guys i thought i'd do a quick check in with you and just update you on the coverage foundation so yeah all right i'll see you later see you. I hope you find this review helpful. I wanted to put this out there just in case when anyone's looking for shade reference and you know what they look like in real life. So hopefully, you know, this will be this will come in handy. Thank you so much for watching guys and I see you in my next video. Bye!